and welcome to Diecast Restos. I'm Jason and this is Lesney's 29A Bedford Milk Float, which was in the Matchbox range from 1956 to 1961. This example is visually in a play-worn condition, but it has secrets that lurk beneath. The axle support on the rear left has had a bodged repair at some point in its past, and it's still loose. In addition, the front rivet doesn't actually do anything, as the base can be slipped on and off. So I'll look to rectify these problems. This was the second of three Bedford CA based vans to join the Matchbox range, following the Dunlop van in 1956 and the Evening News van following in 1957. Here's an image of a Bedford CA van with a modified body. Bedfords were very popular in the 1 to 75 range. I've counted no less than 14 variations of model in the series. I've already restored the 42A Evening News van some time ago, which shares the same platform as the 25A Dunlop van that I'm still to do. Matchbox already had the 7A horse-drawn milk float in the range when the Bedford came along, having been introduced in 1954. Interestingly, both were deleted from the series in 1961 when the 21C comma bottle float was released. The 29A was always painted in varying shades of tan. This example had metal wheels, but later examples had grey plastic wheels. You can also tell this is an early example due to the white bottle load on the back. Later ones were painted cream. So here are the parts that make up the model, and here I'm flattening out that rivet so that the base is secured at the front as well as via the tongue and slot at the back. The Bedford CA van was introduced in 1952 and was in production until 1969. The two-piece windscreen design was amended to a single pane of curved glass in 1958, and so this van is based on the early split-screen version. Here I'm digging out the axle support from what I can only assume is a lot of solder or gum or glue or something similar. Finally, it breaks away and I can then set about planning to refit it. I brush up the axle ends using my battery drill and some sandpaper. And then I pour on some hot water ready to paint strip using caustic soda. When the split screen was replaced by Bedford, along with it went the split in the grill. In 1964, the grill design changed again to a sunken pressed aluminium. A three-speed gearbox was fitted to a 1500cc four-cylinder engine, while later versions benefited from a 1.6 litre unit. Additionally, 1.6 and 1.7 Perkins diesel engines were available. Due to its short, stubby nose, engine access was limited to a small bonnet flap or an interior cowl. For major engine work, the headlights, grille and chassis front crossmember needed complete removal. The CA had a steering mounted gear change while the headlamp dip switch was foot operated. Instruments consisted purely of the speedometer, fuel gauge and water temperature gauge. Once body priming is complete, I turn my attention to re-securing that axle support, firstly by gluing and allowing it to dry. The superglue is strong enough to hold it in place for now, so to keep the two supports level, I thread an axle through the two eyes. In the meantime, I clean up each of the four metal wheels. Then I poorly record myself soldering the glued joint. Often associated with the Bedford CA was the Bedford Dormobile, a camper van conversion manufactured by Martin Walker of Folkestone. The first CA motorhomes were equipped with a gas stove, a sink, cupboards and seats that converted to beds. These were released in 1957. It had an elevating roof that hinged on one side to reveal a red and white striped canopy, making it possible to stand inside the vehicle. The CA was also exported to Canada and badge engineered as the Envoy CA. 
Envoy was created by General Motors of Canada to serve this purpose between 1959 and 1970. So now I've primed and coated the base section in white. My repairs aren't perfect, but it's certainly looking a little less crude. It could do with a second coat of white, then after that it should be good to fit. Instead of my usual Molotow Chrome, I opt to utilise the Pentel Silver Paint Marker on the grill. It's not quite as bold and brash as the Molotow, I think it sits better on the earlier models, but it can be debatable on some castings whether the chrome or silver suits best. This pen leaks a fair bit, so I spread the excess around with a fine brush. I cautiously apply the paint to the headlights directly from the pen here. Now using my vice grip, I can apply enough pressure to recrimp the axle ends. Then I do get out my Molotow pen to spruce up the axles. Now it's time for a fairly straightforward reassembly. All it takes is for the base to be slotted in, first the tongue through the rear slot, and then pushing down over my reformed rivet. Lastly, I can attach the M2 screw. So let's remind ourselves of how the 29A Bedford milk float looked to begin with. Its quality is deceptive, it's a basic casting, but it had some major problems on the chassis. That axle support was completely loose following a bodged repair, while the front post served no purpose. So here is how this murky milk float looks now. I've tried to match the shade of tan as best I could using Tamiya's Flat Flesh TS77. The silver on the front looks good, and I feel a better choice than the chrome. The wheels have been cleaned and the axles crimped. And the bottle load is much fresher in a crisp white. In addition, the axle ends are as sparkly as when they left the Lesney factory at least 60 years ago. So if you've enjoyed this milk float makeover, please like, comment and subscribe. Do check out my Patreon and Instagram, links are in the description below. I regularly update my content on each. That just leaves me to say thank you very much for watching, and I will see you again for the next one. Bye for now.